What's up, everybody? Hopefully, y'all can hear me. Somebody give me a shout out to uh, make sure that our our mics are working okay. I have my wife my wife with me. So uh, while we do this, if you have any questions, feel free just to um, log into the chat there and and ask away. But basically, what we're going to be doing is I have this practice panel hood right here, and uh, it's already painted orange. I did some uh, some testing with some colors on it, but I figured this would be uh, good just to throw out some patterns and um, use some of the uh, sizing glue. I get a lot of questions about that. Uh, I'll be able to answer a lot of that here in this live. So like I said, any questions, we're here to help you. So uh, let us know. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on this and we'll kind of just uh, we'll play it at that. So right now I'm just using a 600 grit sanding sponge. Just using this to knock down the uh, the orange or knock down the finish here. It's important to do this and to get all the gloss sanded off because uh, you'll have you'll end up having adhesion problems. Paint just won't stick to to clear like this. You'll end up pulling the tape and you'll pull up your paint with it. So make sure you're knocking down all of the gloss. Oh, it looks like you guys can hear me. Killer Capricorn, Guy, Joel, appreciate you guys being here. Like I said, I'm just knocking down the finish here. Giving the uh, the paint something to grab to. All right, that looks good enough. some 3M glass cleaner. I'm just going to use that to remove the sanding residue. Marco from Canada. What's up, man? Appreciate that. All right. Look at that. Okay. As you can see, the gloss is pretty much gone. Little nib there. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, so uh, we have a couple of different sizes of tape I'm going to use here. Since this is a smaller um, hood panel, I think it's 10 by 11. I'm not going to use the quarter inch tape because I feel like um, just these two, the eighth inch and the 16th, will work just fine for what we're going to do. Uh. So to get the panel, uh, you can get that on the on Amazon. You can check the link. I think it's right down in the description. Uh, you can also go search Limeline anywhere and you'll find it there as well. So what I'm going to do to start out with the eighth inch is I just kind of want to follow. You don't have to do this. It's not a hard rule, but I like to follow the contour we have going on with the hood anyways. Um, we have these little styled areas here and also right here. So. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and run one right along that that body line right there. And I'll just do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, these hoods are great to practice on. I think they're only like uh, 18 or 19 bucks free shipping. That's on Amazon. Did I get that in the same spot? Yeah. Okay, looks good. So I'm just going to keep moving forward with the eighth inch. I like to get all the eighth inch done first, and then I'll come back and accent those lines with the sixteenth inch. Make 
which I put one right here, right on the bottom of this. I'm just going to take an X-Acto blade here and you can see right here that I'm just going to clean up those tape edges. Let that one curve up over. Okay. Yeah, so it does look like right here, you can see where I thought I did something wrong. I kind of followed the, the bottom half of that. So let me pull that line because you can see that's smaller than that. You always look at the negative space in between. Let me, uh, let me pull that and lay down another one. That looks good so far. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and run a center line right here, right down the center. I can see right here this point. So that's what I'll kind of go off of. Oops, let's try that again. Okay, we're just going to use that as reference. And let's say uh, maybe we'll panel this out by following this contour right here. Make that a little smoother. Okay, I got that. All right, I'll go ahead and um, I kind of have a couple of lines here because I was doing some, like I said, I was doing some testing on some colors with some undercolors, black and white. But I'll go ahead and follow that. But that, as you can see, that center line is going to give us reference in order to make uh, this other side even so you can see here that we're looking at the negative space here so i'm kind of just hovering it above 
and you can kind of see where and when it matches. See right there. Just like that. We're going to make this one pretty easy because I because we're going to do some leafing and other stuff like that. So um, we're going to keep the design pretty simple. So we'll pull off that center line. Okay, so we're done. We're going to keep, like I said, we're going to keep it simple. We're done with the eighth inch. Let's go ahead and lay out some 16th inch and we'll just kind of accent the lines and it gives us gives us something to aim for when we start airbrushing here in a second i like to you know you can do it however you want but i like to keep about an eighth inch between and i like to just accent one side of the line but once again it's you, you can do it however you like it's just kind of the way i do it i feel like it looks good that way doesn't doesn't make it too busy Match the same thing over here on this side. Getting windy, huh? Okay, we got that outlined with the 16th. We'll go ahead and do these as well. little square right there you can see where I probably if this was an important piece I'd go ahead and pull that line right there you can see how it kind of squares off it's not, not as smooth as it should be we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it and then you can see uh, what it looks like is really you, you're not even going to be able to tell that's like that once it's all painted I'll just kind of leave that so you can see okay so there's just two straight lines right here I'm just going to leave those as well um, kind of make it a little bit different but okay so there's the layout Pretty simple. Uh, what I'm thinking is we'll do, uh, so we'll outline everything in black with an airbrush. We'll, uh, we'll outline it and blend it. And then maybe we'll do some, uh, some gold leaf will match this. And then maybe we'll do some root beer brown over this orange to kind of, uh, kind of spice it up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and put this off to the side. Uh, 
my mixing cup. We're going to be using some Lime Lime Black Base Coat. You can use this out of your paint gun or your airbrush. This is mixed at about a one-to-one, -one, a little bit more. Uh, it's pretty thick, so... Do you want... You're going to want to reduce it with urethane reducer. Anyway, I have some urethane reducer in here. So, you know, it's not a hard rule on any of uh, mixing reducers. So you mix it to how it sprays good. And then it's, if it's spraying and it's splotchy, then we need to add a little bit more reducer. Looks like I have some brown in there. I'm going to clean that out. All right, let's go ahead and fill it up. This is a uh, Iwata Neo. It's their bottom end airbrush, but it's still really good, especially for for what we're doing here. Can't remember the cost on this. Under a hundred bucks though. It's better, and another thing is, um, it's better to buy the cheapest Iwata than it is to buy any other airbrush. So uh, don't don't buy no name brands when it comes to to airbrushes because they're a real technical piece of equipment, and a lot of stuff can go wrong with it. And Iwata's been doing it for long enough to kind of figure those things out. Somebody asked, what if it's bubbly after sprayed and it leaves tiny craters? Is it too wet? Yes. Um, yes, I guess you would call those more like uh, fish eyes. You, you definitely, when you spray base coat, you're going to want to, it's not sprayed like regular clear coat or anything. It's, it's sprayed uh, light and in coats, especially when you're spraying with a gun. Okay, there we go. So you can see right here, that's looking pretty good. Now, if it was, uh, if it come out all splotchy or anything like that, you're going to probably want to reduce it more. As you can see right here where I sprayed it here, it was reduced too much. You can see how it kind of just blew out. So with, with airbrushing, you really have to try it out. You know, you don't just mix it and, and go for it. Mix it, try it out, see if it's spraying good. And if it is, then, then you can go for it. There's no really, like I said, there's no really hard rule with reducing. It depends on the airbrush. It depends on your air pressure. Depends on uh, how big you want your blends. There's a lot of factors that go along with uh, with air pressure and the reduction. All right, so I'm just going to kind of aim right here. You can see I'm going to aim for the middle of the two tapes. Pretty much everywhere I'm going to aim for the, the middle of the two tapes. This one I'm just going to aim for right here on the top. Someone just asked, how do you get super fine lines, reduce air pressure? Um, yes, you're going to get closer to the surface. And uh, definitely when you get closer to the surface, you're going to want to reduce your air pressure. So yeah, you're, you're right on that.
And as you can see, when I make my first pass, I'm not completely covering this. It takes a few different passes. And it only takes just a few seconds to dry. Like literally, this is already dry. You can see how fast base coat dries. Especially when it's sprayed, you know, out of so finely out of uh, an airbrush like this. It dries super quick, which is good for us. Looks like I need a little bit more. Okay. So, uh, let's mix up some candy here. We'll, we can mix up some root beer candy that'll go really good with this orange base coat. Um, the reason kind of why I did it on this orange base coat, because if you have, say like you have a paint job that you don't necessarily want to change the base color, but you want to do something a little bit custom to you, you could, uh, sand it down 600 grit, 800 grit, uh, whatever you like on that. And then you can lay out this tape and basically paint on top of what you already have. You just got to make sure it's clean and you definitely have to make sure that it's sanded down so that, uh, the, the layer of paint has something to stick to All right, so I have some brown candy already mixed up here. Kind of show you. House of Color, KK07 is what's in here. It's mixed with, I mixed it with the Lime Lime Clear Base Coat. Uh, I mixed it at about two parts clear base coat, one part of this concentrate. So uh, you guys that don't know, the House of Color, when it comes like this, this is in uh, concentrated form. Does it say on there? Yeah, right there. Concentrated form. So that means you need to mix it with clear base coat or inner coat clear or the nebulizer that they sell. You can mix it with any of those and it works really well. Uh, so that thins it, that, that reduces it out to make it not so potent. The urethane reducer is what thins it out to make it spray well. Because if you were just to mix this with the clear base, it's going to be way too thick. You got to have the urethane reducer to thin it out to, to, to the application that you're going to be spraying. So if you're spraying out of an airbrush, it has a really small, uh, a small needle. So the paint needs to be thinner in order to be able to spray out. 
uh, paint gun, it's obviously going to be a little bit thicker. So when we talk reduction and a lot of people do, they like, well, how do I reduce it? What's my air pressure? A lot of it depends on exactly what you're spraying and what tools you're using. The best thing I can say is just to practice it to make sure it's spraying good before you start your panel. So we already have that. I'm going to reduce this a little more because it's been sitting out. So candy, real quick, candy is just a transparent color. Best thing I can compare it to is like, kind of like candy, like what a Jolly Rancher is or a hair dye, I guess you could say, uh, but it's transparent. It doesn't actually cover what's below. It's just going to dye it a little bit. So with metal flake and stuff, this works great because you can still get the shine of the metal flake and the flakes or everything and anything like that. You can still see it. Uh, this, however, doesn't have really any metal flake in there, but still a really cool look. It's going to look really cool, really crisp. Um, I'm excited to see what it looks like. But yeah, like I said, uh, stick around because we're still going to be doing some gold leaf right here, which will really make this thing pop. Okay, use same airbrush. Clean it out with some lacquer thinner. Well, this looks like it's pretty thick, so let's check it out. No, that's all right. You can see it's a little bit thicker. But, uh, I mean, nah, it's spraying pretty good. We're going to be fine. If it's thinner than you want it, it's just going to take more passes. But you're going to get a nice smooth blend, so don't even worry about it if it's too thin. Just don't have it so thin that it blows out, you know, like we had earlier. You don't, you don't, you don't want it to, to blow out. It'll definitely look funny at that point. Okay, okay so I'm just gonna kind of accent this with the brown candy. What this is gonna do is kind of push everything back, give it a nice deep tone. Someone asked on here if we are going to be doing lives, like every one day a week, a random. We plan on doing it every at least once a week. Thursdays, I think, is what we were planning on. Couldn't do it tomorrow, so we figured instead of missing, we'll go ahead and do it tonight and get everything set up. Uh, let us know if there's anything up with the sound or anything like that, because, like I said, we're kind of relearning because it's been a minute. Someone really appreciate, appreciate you guys being here. Someone asked what all you can use to reduce or thin that what was the question one more time they want to know what you can use to reduce and thin that paint urethane reducer definitely urethane reducer um don't try to use lacquer thinner even though it'll work urethane reducer has uh some added retardants in it that keep the solvents from penetrating into your next layer of paint so urethane reducer kind of is used pretty broadly you can use it with thinning out paint you can thin out clear coat you can thin out your primer um you can clean your gun with it if you want to but that's kind of expensive up a little more there okay there kind of thin this out just a little bit more because it was a little thick giving us better blends now still aiming for the tape as you can see i'm just pushed back pulled back just a little bit farther the farther back you are away from the surface the bigger of an area you're going to be blending that makes sense right like somebody said earlier um, really, if you get really close, you're going to get lines like this, you know, really small. If you're back like this, Brian, you can see it's more of a blend and that's what we're looking for here. You know, when I was with the black, it was a little bit closer because I wanted to control how much 
of a blend I was going out from the tape. This one's back a little bit farther, allowing the overspray to kind of work in my favor and create those nice, nice blends and uh, color adjustments there. Someone asked how much, how much to mix it one to one. I think they're asking like the reducer. Yeah, the reducer is mixed. A uh, general rule for the reducer is mixed one to one. I think I mixed it a little bit, a little bit more on the reduced side on this. All right, we're gonna pull out some lace here and maybe we're just gonna go ahead and lace the center of this. Someone asked, is there a reason when you paint, you often put a silver or gray as a base coat? Uh, yes, so silver or gray base coat. Uh, mostly I use a metal flake base coat. Uh, but you can, anything of a lighter color would be better. I mean, obviously if you're doing this on top of black, you would have to choose a different color than black. You'd have to use something lighter, which would, you'd have a different look, but probably would still look really good. I'm just going to take a little bit of masking tape here. And since I'm going to lay out some lace down the center of this. I don't really want the overspray in, of lace in there on, this, on these sides. So let's kind of lay that out. Just lightly, nothing too crazy. Just tuck those underneath. All right. Some people use spray adhesive to lay this down. Don't do it. People ask me all the time. I mean, you can really just, if, if you're worried about it, tape it down real good, but you don't want to leave any residue on top of your, your paint. So once again, I'm just going to start at the edges and kind of blend in that way, the pattern, the lace pattern on the edges still blend into the center. Someone asked if you were rubbing the tape on your shirt to, Yes. Yeah, I, I just suck the, the tape to my shirt to make it less tacky. I don't want to pull my paint off here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Hopefully that's good. Oh, yeah, that looks great. Okay, now let's pull this tape off and hopefully don't pull my paint. It usually don't. It's very rarely it does. And if it does, it's because you prepped something wrong, usually. Someone asked um, if it was possible could you do a series of correcting mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then someone else said, oh, yes, please. Correcting mistakes. I'd have to make a whole lot of mistakes. There's a couple of mistakes right there. That's because I didn't sand that edge. You know, there's still gloss right there. Paint doesn't want to stick to that. And but, someone, uh, easy, some, easy fix on that one. Someone else asked, how quick does the paint dry for tack dry? Uh, how, so how quickly does this paint dry? It's really a matter of minutes. It all depends on how heavy you spray it and how fast you spray it. If you're really flooding it on, it's going to take longer for the solvents to evaporate. Okay, that looks really good. We'll go ahead and leave those blended. We won't put anything else into that. Maybe I'll just kind of add a little more brown maybe on that. So I'll over-reduce this mixture. 
You can see, you can see right now how. See how it's flooding out like that compared to what it was. Well, this is going to give us really smooth blends. And you see, I'm I'm pretty far back here, and we're just going to push that that lace back a little bit farther, give it a little more depth. Okay, that's looking good. All right, I think we're ready. Uh, we're ready for some leafing here. So I get a lot of questions on the lime line. Mix 50 to 50, 50, 50 with water. Make sure is you're, you're spraying on a sanded clean surface, which uh, it's pretty clean. Uh, once again, we're not, not a whole lot of texture there from the paint. So that's good. If, if there was a lot of texture or if there was blemishes, we would probably want to clear this and we could always just do the leafing on top of the next layer. Um, yeah, glue is ready for leafing when tacky, but does not string up to the touch. And I'll kind of show you that here in a minute, but let's go ahead and get a cup. And 50, 50. A couple questions on questions on here. Someone said, "Can you paint a complete vehicle with that bottle of paint?" Uh, did we lose me? Oh, uh, okay. I think we're back. I think we're back. Sorry about that. Um, can you? Can you? Uh, now, is it, are they talking about the leafing glue? No, it was before you the glue. Um. If you're if you're talking about the if you're talking about the uh, root beer brown, I don't know. Probably not a whole car, no. And someone asked, um, what kind of tape that is that you're using? Limeline. Limeline is the green tape. Uh, buyback is the masking tape I use to the yellow. You can find yeah. both those. Uh, you can find the limeline on Amazon. I don't think the buyback's on there. And another question, someone said, would cleaning down whatever you're painting the urethane reducer help the paint to stick better? Yeah, they asked if the urethane reducer made the paint. Somebody asked cleaning, cleaning, uh, I guess cleaning it up with urethane reducer before painting. Um, probably not. You just use wax and grease remover. This was already pre-painted with orange, and I knew I didn't touch it with greasy hands, so there was no need to do that. But yeah, definitely wax and grease remover will uh, get off any contaminants that would cause cause adhesion problems like that. All right, I'm gonna hook up my other airbrush because I do like to just use a dedicated airbrush for the sizing glue because it uh when you're going back from back and forth from water base to these urethane acrylic paints it's uh kind of pain in the butt you definitely don't want anything like in your glue you know you don't want anything falling into your glue any chunks or anything like that basically going to pick the leaf is going to pick up pick up all of the texture that you laid down so if this gets really textured somehow with the glue or gets flooded out and you try to lay leaf on there it's going to bring up the texture with it it's not a good look you want to you want to get it to lay out as smooth as possible and I'll, I'll show you that here in a second someone asked for painting plastic parts and metal will the paint be muted on the plastic part Uh, you're gonna have to explain that question a little more. I guess I don't understand. 
Uh, plastic plastic parts do require more prep work because of adhesion problems. But um, yeah, try to maybe maybe elaborate a little bit more on that question. Maybe I'll be able to help you. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, we'll take some green 3M. I'm gonna stick it to my shirt, make it a little less tacky, and I'm gonna follow this inside 16th inch line taped right on top of it. Someone asked if you've ever tried to paint some candy over painted wood surface. I I haven't, but I it would probably work though for sure. Paint paint seems to seems to stick really good onto wood because it's really porous. But yeah, like if you're doing some wood grain speaker boxes or something like that, I can see that working really well. Okay, so going back to that question about the plastic in the metal, he's saying he was just wondering if the plastic would show up lighter compared to the metal. Uh, not that I know of. But I know that sometimes, I do know that reducers and stuff, once they hit a metal surface, reducers tend to cool. Like it actually makes the metal cold. Uh, and by that happening, if you're spraying like a base coat that um, has like flakes and stuff in it, it could it would lay different and look different just because of the fact that uh, when it's laid on metal, it gets cold. Unlike plastic, when urethane reducer uh, comes in contact with plastic, it gets hot. And that causes paint to act different as well. Um, but mostly that problem is in the auto body collision field because they're trying to match paints and uh, but i've never personally had a problem because everything gets primed i feel like once it has the primer on there it, it really does i've never really had a problem with that but i've heard it that's, that's where i've actually got a lot of that information from with the hot and cold with the plastic and the metal it's kind of weird how the chemistry works on that All right, so I don't have to tape on top of all this. I'm gonna use some masking tape, masking paper. Okay. See so that little error right here? You can see, maybe you can see it in the camera. There's just a little blemish um, that didn't get sanded out of the clear coat. If this was like a customer's job, I would make sure that that was gone, that little nib, because you will see later that once the leaf's laid on that, it's going to take that texture, which is not, it's not going to ruin the whole thing, but I mean, that's stuff you have to watch for. You want to make sure that this surface doesn't have any orange peel it's been sanded and smooth so it's better to apply the leaf on top of a sanded clear coat rather than just um, on top of anything else that's not smooth all right looks like my glue leaked out fill that back up again Uh, 
Uh, okay, somebody on Amazon Live asked uh, the cleanup on this stuff. So, yeah, the cleanup is with water. Um, I also sometimes use a little bit of glass cleaner as well. Okay, so this is this is the glue mixed 50-50 with the water. And the reason why we do this is because we need it to be thin and we need it to lay out uh, really smooth. If we're going to lay it out and it's going to look like this, say like... If you create a texture like that where it beads up, you know, because obviously when something gets wet enough, it's going to it's going to beat up. It's going to create a texture. You don't want that. You you're with this glue. It's not like the conventional oil based leafing glue where it gets brushed on and it's, it's it levels out and it gets really thick. That's not how this works. You, you spray it on super thin, just like that. See, I mean, you can't even tell. It does have a little bit of a um, pearlized blue blue in it that kind of helps you see. So when you do oversaturate it, you can see that blue kind of come out in it. The camera's probably not going to pick that up. But uh, if you were to get it and use it, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do both of these at the same time. Make sure my tip's clean. And I'm just going to lay the first coat out really light. Same over here. Okay, I'm just going to let that sit. It kind of hazed up a little bit because it does have that blue pearl in it. And you can kind of see it right there. Once it flashes off, um, it, it goes clear. So we're going to give that just a second. Someone asked, what would be the maximum time you can leave the tape on without it peeling the paint? I've left tape on for a really long time. I've left tape on for months and it's been fine. If it's been out in the weather or something, or if it gets wet, it's going to, it's not going to come off, <laughs> but it all depends on how, you know, it probably still won't peel your paint if you prep it good enough. But I feel comfortable leaving it on for two, three days for sure. Okay, I'm put a second coat on this. I got it a little bit wet right there. It started to beat up a little bit, but no big deal. So that would be the max. You wouldn't want to apply any more than what I did right there. And hopefully you guys can see that. But it, like once, like I said, once you get it so wet, it takes longer for it to dry. And it just wants to attract to each other instead of, you know, laying it out in a, like a tack coat fashion. Somebody said, show, show us the glue string on the finger before tacking up. Uh, let's see if I can do that. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that with the camera. I mean, literally, um, pushing it down, you have to really get down there and look. But you push down, put some pressure down, pull up. If you can see it start to string up, wait a little bit longer. And literally just a minute later, you know, right now, this is actually, this is good and ready. And uh, I'm going to put another light coat on there. And really, if you're spraying it light enough, it's never going to be stringy. And you're ready to go, ready to go straight to leafing. Someone asked, what airbrush, airbrush compressor do you use? I have the, um, air, the Iwata Studio airbrush compressor you can even get the one like at harbor freight or something it'll do just fine all right so i'm going to take some of this gold leaf and lay it down as smooth as possible right there you don't want to get it really wrinkled or anything like that 
the smoother you can get it, the better. I'm just rubbing it in right there. right there okay all right so I'm gonna take a glove let me throw a glove on real quick somebody asked what gliding size I'm using so gliding is leafing size is glue so basically what he's asking is what leafing glue i'm using and it's the uh lime line sprayable leafing i'll show it one more time real quick it's on amazon dries fast best leaf glue ever i'm telling you all right so i'm just going to use the gloved hand and my finger right there let's see Looks like I need to fill in a little bit of area right there. Before I get patting that down. Before you pat it all down, you wanna make sure you didn't miss any areas. Right here, the leaf kind of ripped. So I'm just gonna lay, lay that in there. And the reason why I'm doing this, pushing it straight down, because when you, I, I mean, I could use the brush right now, but it's going to, like, where the seams are, it brushes it away instead of, like, pushing it down into the corners. That's why I like to do this. So they're wondering why you don't use the edge of the leaf that's not on anything. This right here? The edge? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of lay it down wherever it goes, really. I mean, you, there's no reason to use the edge. You're always going to waste a little bit with, when doing this. But yeah, you can use the edge, I guess. But you're just going to get... I don't see any benefit of that. So I'm going to grab, this is a, a lime line leaf roller. Basically what this does is it really gets down there and it connects that layer of leaf with that glue and attaches it really firmly. So, you know, if it's loose or anything like that, when you go to brush it, you're going to brush it right off and you really need it to stay on. Okay. Here's the other burnishing brush. Um, I, I like to kind of, like I did with my finger, kind of poke it down at first. Try to push those edges down before sweeping. And then kind of get in there and sweep. into the angle there to make sure you're looking really close right here um if you if you plan on if, you, if you're good at uh, pinstriping uh i don't pinstripe really i'm not very good at it so i'm going to rely on the edge of this leaf to be clean enough so i can keep my my uh, pinstripes there without having to to actually pinstripe anything
right there you can see see that that was that little piece of debris that was stuck underneath the clear coat and you can see how that really affected the look i mean you could barely even see it before but you lay leaf on it it looks like a pretty big error nothing you can really do to fix that at this point so you, you have to address that beforehand this is just a practice panel so i'm glad that i was able to show you you know what uh what kind of problems could happen and like i said you got to make sure that the surface is completely smooth because once you get this leaf down it kind of just shows everything You see, I'm really focusing on getting my bristles into that edge. All right. That looks really good. So now if this didn't look good, here's the great thing about leafing like this with this glue. Is I wasn't too happy. Say there was a little bit of tear there, or a little bit of tear there, or just for the fact that maybe when you go to, to engine turn it, and I'll show you that here in a second, um, maybe you're a little bit heavy handed, or maybe you're new at it and you're not sure exactly how hard you should be pushing. Um, we can double layer this leaf, and I want to show you how to do that right now. Because if you push too hard, you have another base layer of leaf that's uh protecting that burn through so um move this out of the way and let's go ahead and do that real quick because that's the nice thing about this leafing glue is you can literally stack the leaf um to make sure that it's perfect because you know once you spin it and it looks like crap in one area you can't fix it without it looking completely different you have to you have to literally redo the whole thing which is, you know, it's not the end of the world. You tape it off again and, and do it again, but at, it's already masked up. Say like, uh, you know, there was a couple of spots missing here and there. Didn't quite get enough glue. Well, just go ahead and put some more sizing glue on it. Someone said, so someone said, so the sizing glue is almost instant. No waiting two to 12 hour wait. No. They asked if there's any adhesion issues over time. Any adhesion? Uh, to be honest with you, you're going to have more adhesion issues with that oil-based sizing glue because you have less of a tack on that than you do on this. Um, but no, I've been using this stuff for a little over a year. Never a problem um, as far as adhesion goes. Sometimes with certain clear coats, they do have a little bit of a tough time adhering to the leaf because it's metal. Clear coat really doesn't uh, attach to metal that well. Um, I have um, run into a couple of problems with that. Uh, spraying your first coat's a clear coat, really light, tends to, to definitely help with adhesion. Um, some people have even put a little bit of bulldog in their airbrush and sprayed it over to to help with that. But to be honest, I really haven't had very many problems with um, the leafing adhering uh, or the the clear adhering to the leafing. Uh, I really haven't had any problems with the leaf uh, glue. You know, it's it sticks really well. See, that's tacky. I'm going to wait just another second. Make sure I got that edge real good. You can see when I'm spraying this, I'm way back here. So I'm getting the whole area. You know, you don't want to get up way close, you know, flood it out. There's no reason to do that. Bring it back eight inches or so. Make sure you're just kind of dusting over, like I said, that whole area. Oh yeah, we're ready to go. That fast. Yeah, I need to pick this up. Let's go. Let's see here. There we go. Wow. 
Well, let's get it on there straight. Someone said that they learned that you have to have no wind and hold your breath when you lay down, <laughs> <laughs> which is so true. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't breathing. I know that. It's the storm here. <laughs> okay, I'll put my glove on again. Oh, oh well, that's going to work. really get that force down into that edge that way you can get nice clean edges i hope not Yeah, hopefully that's better, guys. We got a storm rolling in here. Nothing like Florida, but maybe that's causing some problems with the internet. So this is our last layer of leaf on here. We want to make sure that those edges are really tucked in there. kind of forcing those bristles into the edge. Okay, that's looking really good. Okay, hope you guys are still with us. We're about ready to peel this off.
Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and pull all these lines off right now. That's the original orange that we started with. So like, say that whatever you were painting was blue, you could always use like a blue candy. Like this was just, a, this brown was a, kind of a complimentary candy color to this orange, I feel like. So kind of definitely accents that. Someone asked the question, on a customer's hood, would you use a plastic razor or put tape over the metal one? Or do you have a good technique? No, I have a good technique, but I would definitely use the plastic blade if you're if you're uh, trying to peel these off of paint. I actually looked for mine and I couldn't find it. They should be bright green and not black. Let's see, okay. I'm going to pull these off. Looks like I got a little bit of a problem there. A little bit of paint came off there, but we can always fix that. As you can see on this leafing, I'm going to pull it straight back onto itself. I don't want to pull it that way, and I don't want to pull it that way. I'm going to pull it straight back. All right, here it looks like that's all the tape that's removed. I'm gonna go ahead and take the burnishing brush one more time and you can see how I actually didn't mask it up very good right here. I got a little bit of overspray. Um, yeah, when I went to mask that little 16th inch line, I didn't quite mask it up and I left a little sliver right there. But I'm gonna take this brush and just kind of brush down those edges. Someone asked, the paints you use, um, are they for high temp? Let's see. Is there high temp colors for using them in the engine department? Mm. Uh, I would say no. Uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. But there is high temp paint. I think Cerakote has some automotive paint that you can paint even on exhaust. So yeah, look in the Cerakote if you're wanting to paint engine parts. They even have like bright neon colors. All right, we're ready to spin. So, uh, Limeline 
has these one inch spinners. Basically, it's a, an aluminum spun piece of metal with a this foam pad right here is also important because when you press down, you can see how that kind of just shifts. But that makes, uh, so if you're like kind of sideways and you're trying to spin, you're not going to put too much pressure. It kind of helps even that out. Um, so some of these tools, they don't come with that. And I don't, I feel like that's not enough of a padding. So yeah, one inch, 5,000 grit. And we're going to give it about a quarter of a turn right here. Quarter of a turn. Uh, about a 60% or 40% overlap, whatever you want to do. Some people even turn right here on this side, then they'll turn on this side, kind of zigzag it. I like to just go straight up and, uh, you know, 40% overlap or something. 50% overlap, whatever you want to do. Whatever you think looks good. Start right here at the bottom. Give it a quarter to a half inch spin. See if we can get this in some better light and get a there we go see a little better in this light i like to just overlap it enough so it's not quite in the center like i said 40 percent or so but it's up to you whatever you think looks good once again there's our little problem area kind of going away but you want to definitely uh, catch that before you get into all. If you're at this point, you know, you've kind of you know, nothing you can do about that. And you can see how nice that spun. No burn throughs, a nice clean edge. Let's go ahead and do this other side. Like I said, a couple problems right there. Didn't mask it up good enough right there. Little sliver of leaf is hanging out on that other corner, which is not supposed to be there. It's just a practice piece. Even right here, it looks like I probably could have paid a little bit more attention. Didn't get the brush quite in there enough. Um, let's see if I can even, if that's even tacky enough, I can fix that. Yeah, we'll kind of fix that. See if we can get you the right angle on this spin. Well, if if you're Spins aren't that crisp. Usually, you're probably using the wrong leaf because not all leaf is spinnable. I have some other leaf that's here. It'll lay out super good. You go to spin it, and it actually makes it dull. So, not all leaf is actually meant to be spun. All right, that's it right there. There's a, uh, let me go ahead and dust it off one more time. When you go to spin it, sometimes it leaves a little bit of like a spin dust. I just made that word up, but uh, spin, you got to get that spin dust off of there, especially before you clear it. Yeah, it, it hid that. I mean, putting the, the spins in there kind of did hide that a little bit more but like I said you really want to get that taken care of beforehand so yeah this would be ready for clear coat um, like I said we, we spun this right after no waiting no waiting on the spin virtually no waiting on the glue if it's applied right if it's oversaturated it, it's gonna take a long time to dry usually you left a lot of texture on there if you do leave a little bit of texture relief it again uh, a lot of the stuff where I want it to be 100% perfect, I'll leaf it uh, two times. 
because it's just easier that way. Sometimes you have to leave it twice anyways when it comes to that. Uh, but uh, hopefully this has been valuable for you guys. And uh, hopefully the audio has been okay. I'll, I'll give it just another second if any other questions happen to roll in. But just kind of recap what we did. We used eighth inch lime line tape with 16th inch lime line tape on top of this cleared orange base coat that was sanded with 600 grit. Cleaned it with glass cleaner. Mixed up some black base coat. Followed the lime line pinstripes with it. Blending it out. Mixed up a little bit of root beer brown house of color candy. Mixed it with the lime line clear base coat. Reduced it with urethane reducer to make it sprayable. And, you know, kind of just, once again, just made the blends a little bit bigger. Creating this darker orange right here. Blending into the center, which that looks so great. I mean... Yeah, the lace looks fine too, but look how look how nice that looks just with the blend. Something so simple is so great. We did lay down some lace. We used the same root beer brown candy over that. We edged that again, kind of blending that into the center. We masked out and covered up all around, all of this. Laid down the the sizing glue. Laid down the first layer of leaf. Burnished it. Rolled it. One more layer of glue and leaf, rolled it, burnished it, pulled the tape, and spun it. So, not too hard, really. So, that's, that's kind of a recap of everything we did. This live will also be, you can uh, you can catch this again um, on the replay on uh, both Amazon Live and the on the YouTube. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, someone asked, how do you fix any bleed through of the tape? So if you've, if you've, uh, bled through the tape and the base layer is clear coated, you could take a couple of different things. Um, let's see if I can find a little bit of an error somewhere. Okay. Right here. Looks like there's a, this whole thing's an error. I, I didn't even cut that straight cause I was, I had a camera in my face. But that's not right. See, that should uh, come straight through right there. We're going to pretend like we got to get rid of a little bit of this. This under spray is what it'd be considered because it got under the tape. Even though, uh, like I said, this is not supposed to be like that. But we could just easily clean up a little bit of overspray, under spray, just like that. Um trying to look see like you know maybe right here is not all that clean you could just i mean even this maybe you can kind of scratch some of this stuff away but uh you can scratch it away if it's been clear coated you can uh tape it off sometimes you can get a little bit of reducer in there with a cotton swab uh but you just kind of push down your tape really good really the problems with this is because i was in there and i didn't quite it cut it quite straight and then you know this line may have shrunk a little bit i didn't really pay attention to that but when when it comes down to doing these jobs for real it's these little tiny little tiny errors that you need to make sure you avoid once again see here's a cut right here it was cut a little bit wide it should have come straight down right here mistakes i usually don't make like that um, i'm usually right on it but once again this is just all practice um, I'm glad at least you can see uh, those errors. Um, but you could, once again, you could clear this. Um, once it's all cleared, sand it down. You can revise and fix some of these errors just by, you know, taping it up right there, spraying a little bit of black. A lot of times I'll do that after it's been cleared, fix some errors, put it back in a clear coat. Because with complex jobs like this, there's always usually something here and there that you got to repair. It's not easy to do taping on top of your existing base coat. If you clear it and you sand it, you basically protected everything um, from that point down. And if you have to do any kind of erasing or anything like that, it's much easier to do. And as far as taping out, fixing the layers, uh, much easier to do on sanded clear coat. Yeah, thanks, Hot Rod. Thanks for... Appreciate you watching. Carport Customs, what's up, man? 
you have any leaf brushes or rollers? Yes, I do have the leaf rollers, rollers and brushes back in stock. I saw your video. I saw your uh, YouTube the other day. It was awesome. Yeah, a couple people on Facebook. Any other questions? Rolled in. Okay, well, that looks like that's it, guys. Um, you can re-watch this on YouTube or on Amazon, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.